one, two, one, two. Okay, good evening everybody and welcome to another OTR e-racing special. Today it's the Spanish for Improvers, which is a four watt kilogram capped race. We got 10 riders so far signed up. Hopefully a couple more before the race starts. Oh, there's another one turning up. I'm not racing, I'm just covering the uh, the commentary for the race. So I'll need to, uh, I need to spin the pedals at least every 30 minutes to make sure I'm not kicked out of the event. But other than that, um, I won't be racing. I'll be at the back of the group and I'll be following the, uh, the race coverage using the uh, spectate feature in RGT. Getting quite used to using it now, so uh, we shouldn't have the same kind of issues I had when I first started. This is a good race series. Uh, there's at least one rider, Steve Gallagher, who's come up from the um, Flemish for Beginners race series, which I take part in. That's 3.2 watt kilo upper limit. And Steve went through that last week. So this is his first time in the uh, Spanish for Improvers. So good luck, Steve. Uh, and we'll see how, uh, how the others get on. A couple of regulars, including uh, Neil Pugh and Mr. Lopez, but uh, yeah, looking forward to this one. Now, obviously, as I say, I've got to turn the pedals at the start, so you'll see me uh, move off the start line, but then very quickly, as soon as I can register my power and cadence, you'll then see me, uh, me stop start a race commentary so here we go let's find a decent gear come on students that's better okay Now the race circuit is the Catalonia GP circuit. They're going to be doing eight laps. There we go. Took way off. I'll just get away from the finish, start finish line, and then we'll start race coverage. Okay, here we go. So that's the front of the race. Steve's keeping up with them nicely. Let's change the camera view to something that gives us uh, a little bit more. There we go. That gives us a better overview of what's happening on the road. I would switch backwards and forwards during the race, but I just want to see whether they stay together as a group or whether... There we go. Now what we can do with, uh, for those that are not familiar with the spectate view, as well as uh, I'm following Steve Gallagher here, so, uh, but I can, I can follow, the, follow the leader simply by press, pressing the, uh, the end key and whoever happens to be leading at the time becomes a camera view. But then I can use the, uh, the page down button to cycle through the riders. So what's happening at the moment is I'm cycling through the riders working my way backwards from the front and we can see there's Hollingsworth at the back and there's me right at the back. So now I'm going to work my way back up. So Raksha, Steve Gallagher is uh, in the middle and then we got uh, them coming back together behind the leaders. 
So at the moment it's uh, it's all together, apart from uh, Hollingsworth and uh, myself. And I expect it to stay this way for a little while. Um, I wouldn't have thought, unless somebody really starts to push out the wattage, um, I think they'll stay together for a few couple of laps at least. But uh, I've been known to be wrong in the past. We'll see what happens. Now it's interesting to see Steve, who's come up from uh, Steve Gallagher, who's come up from the uh, Flemish for beginners, doing doing the work on the front. That is not something I would be doing. That's for sure, uh, because these riders are going to be stronger than me, and uh, I'd be uh, I'd be wanting to take it a little bit easier, and maybe that's what he's going to do. Yes, you have to uh, sometimes do your fair share, but uh, there's there's racecraft as well. And uh, if you're not the strongest rider in the group, and who's to say he isn't? We'll see. We'll see how he does today. Um, but I know that uh, Neil is is a strong rider. Uh, Mr. Barkley is a strong rider. So, uh, but they're also riders with good racecraft, and and that's important in a race like this. Saving energy when you can. Uh, they're on this short climb now, but it's quite a steep climb. It goes up to, I think, it goes up to about seven, seven percent at its yeah six point nine there. So. 6.9 at its steepest and that's just enough per lap to string the group out as you can see um, It split the group Now they may come back together, but this is a chance for the front runners to put down some good watts and Barkley knows that He's he's a savvy rider. So you can see his numbers are going red at the moment And he's trying to uh, he's trying to keep the gap going now it, if I were the guys behind him, I'd get on his wheel and, and work with him. He's not going to keep this gap going on his own, but you need to help him keep the gap, you know, and, and in even run it out. But if you allow him too much of a, uh, of a lead, he will stay away. He's definitely strong enough to do that. I mean, he's pushing out 3.9, 4.1 watts here, and the riders behind are just... Are just cruising at three watts a kilo that's not enough to bring him back if he decides he wants to push on but he may he may decide i don't know lopez is now trying to uh trying to close the gap you can see he's turning red numbers as are the others so yeah they've decided to try and pull him back because if you let him have too big a gap he'll just run away with it you, you won't see him again so there we go now what's happened here, I'll, I'll go further down the field, you can see that we, we've got a small split in the pack. You've got Janssen just joining these front three, so you've got four at the front. And then you've got a short gap to the guys behind of about 30 metres. And then a further 40 metres to Mr Gallagher who may well be riding on his own for a little while now in this situation you've a choice to make I mean I've, I've been in this situation when I first started with the Flemish for beginners races where I had I, a I had to get my fitness and B I had to learn a little bit of craft back again and what I did was I ended up riding a few times in no man's land and then I, I got a bit more savvy and I looked at the leaderboard and I thought, OK, the guys behind me, there's two guys behind me at 150 metres behind me. I'm going to slow down, let them catch and then we're going to ride as a group because you ride faster as a group of three 
than you will as an individual trying to close a gap that you're not going to close. I mean, he could well close up to O'Grady. He's only 30 odd metres behind, but he, he's going to struggle to close up to the front group, which we'll go back to now, this group. Now, it depends whether the, these riders decide to push on. It looks like they, they're just going very, very steady at the moment. So it may well come back together in terms of O'Grady and Gallagher. They may well join these five riders at the front. However, I don't see... I'm surprised to see Neil, Neil Pugh and uh, uh, Jay Roberts off the pace so early. That, that's a bit of a surprise. Maybe Neil's had a bit of a hard week, I don't know. But we'll go back and check out what he's doing, actually. Let's go back and see. There's Mr Gallagher and O'Grady. And there's Neil. And Mr Roberts. And they're pushing, they're pushing 3 watt kilo, 3.4. So he's not hanging about. He's not exactly killing it, but he's not hanging about. But 110, 15 metres, that's, that's a bit of a gap to close. And they're on the slope at the moment. Raksha's in no man's land. This is not the place to be because he's too far behind the guys in front to catch them. And he's too far in front of uh, the Lantern Rouge, Hollingsworth, to wait for him. So this is what we, and I've, I've been here lots of times, no man's land where, you know, you're not going to wait for the man behind you. You're not going to catch the people in front. And you know, basically, unless people start drop, excuse me, start dropping off the front, you know that you're going to be more or less riding the whole race on your own, certainly on a flat circuit like this, because the positions will change a little but not significantly and I, I'd be surprised if Raksha changes his position in the race. And then of course you've got me right at the back and I must remember to get back on the bike within the next 20 minutes but let's head back up to the, oh there's me at the back, back up to the front and we've still got the five riders. Who's my pick for today? Winning the race? Hmm. It's a toss up. I don't know. I... I'm going to go with Barkley. I'm going to go with Barkley today. We'll see what happens. Lopez is a contender, but I'm going to go with Barkley today. And as I say, I expect these. To stay together for a little while but that this hill and we're coming up I'll stay with them because this hill coming up um, is is hard it's a hard hill it's only short but it, it's enough to uh, to give a push it's my kind of hill actually um, just steep enough to put in a good dig not really long enough but you know if, if you're doing laps like this and you can recover between efforts up this hill, there's a good chance of uh, of splitting the group even further. And you can see here that's that's exactly what is happening. You see, Nylon's gone on ahead. Lopez is following. But I I tend to think in the early laps, perhaps the groups will come back together. The, the hill is short and sharp, but I don't think it's long enough to uh, to spread out this group because they're pretty strong riders. So uh, I would expect solo riders like Nylin and Lopez, if they got together and worked together, they may well be able to pull away. But doing what they're doing here, riding as individuals, you know, this well, coming together now. Now, if they work together, they might be able to stay away. And Lopez will probably want to do that. But Nylin is having none of it. 
he's not really increasing his speed here he's just coming up to the wheel and they're slow they're actually slowing down that you can see from their power output numbers that they're not pushing on so i'd expect the group behind to catch them even though they've opened up a 120 meter gap i still think if the three work together let's go back to them and see whether that's what they're doing if they work together and pull some decent watts they can close that gap certainly with the next rise coming up so yeah they, they are starting to uh you can see from the numbers the gap's starting to come down 80 meters now it's going to come down below that so i do know my racecraft i do know what i'm talking about when it when it comes to tactics and i i know that these these three should be able to work together and should be able to close that gap and if you look at the numbers they're all in the red they're all pushing heavy watts because they know they've got to do it and and the best place to do it is on is on this rise it's not a steep climb it's just a rise you go over the top barclay's putting in 7.8 watt kilos to try and close up to his uh riders in front And I think he will. I think I think he'll close up. He'll close up on Janssen and then they'll close up. Yeah, here we go, look. And then the, there we go. They're all going to come back together. The, the, this is not going to. Because the front group, if you look at the watt kilos, they're on what is a downhill section now, but they're not really putting in any significant efforts. You know, no red numbers from the leaders, which... If you're going to make a break, if you're going to stay away, that's what you need to do. Whereas Janssen just put in a little dig there, red numbers, just to, you know, just to sort of like close the gap up a little bit. And that's all they need to do. Look, another red. There we go. Another short digs. Barkley short dig here. Janssen another one. You know, numbers turning red tells you that they're just giving a little dig just to get back on to the wheel of Greenhaug and then once they catch Greenhaug you know they're on the group all back together O'Grady 250 meters behind uh, I think that's it I think that's it for O'Grady I don't see him closing that gap not not as an individual rider now if gallagher was to join him and they really worked hard there's a possibility but the gap's actually growing now exponentially um as they're riding along and gallagher's showing no signs of joining him even though he's putting out significantly more watts um I say significantly, they're matching each other now, but uh, overall he's putting out more watts than O'Grady, but not really closing the gap. Um, I think those two will come together. I, I, I think it makes sense, and I think they will, they will ride together for a while. But then behind them, sorry, wrong way. Ah, come on. So let's just go back down the field again so that you get an idea of what i'm saying there's o'grady and there's gallagher and they're within like 36 meters of each other now in fact you can see him just up ahead we just use a mouse just to change the view there you go so you can see that uh these two are going to come together as i uh espoused now you've got roberts he's more or less I don't know. He's in no man's land again. Um, possibility, looking at, he's putting in a good effort here. Possibility of joining the two riders ahead. Difficult to call. Um, Neil's totally uh, on his own as well. And it would make sense for him to join up with Roberts, but... Uh, Roberts is putting out significantly more watts and if Neil doesn't feel like putting in the effort to join him, it's going to be a tough race for him. I think he will settle for where he, where he is at the moment looking at this. And then obviously you've got Raksha and he's definitely in no man's land. 
Uh, he's not going anywhere. He's, he's going to stay where he is. And Hollingsworth is just, you know, all credit to the lad for sticking with it because he's just going to ride around and hopefully we'll get to see him finish the race. But looking at the pace he's doing and the watts he's putting out, I think he's settled for just, you know, just riding the course and getting some experience. And I've done that. I've been there. Um, totally realise you're not going to go anywhere. You dropped. You're at the back. You just, yeah, you just want to finish the course. And, you know, and it's a good thing to learn a course, to learn where the risers are, learn where the climbs are, learn where the good descents are. Where For me, it's the descents that I usually get dropped on if I'm not uh, really careful because oh, he's riding a single speed as well. If I'm not really careful, I'll I'll get dropped on the descents because I'm such a lightweight rider. Whereas I can uh, I can put in digs on the climbs. Okay, let's go and see what's happening at the front. And again, all five of them together, and they're going up this climb again. So they're on the next lap going up the climb. I don't expect them to break apart. They did the last lap, but they probably realise that these. Yeah, this is something I had yesterday. Is there any point in going full gas, even though the, you're the strongest on the climb? And I was yesterday. I was without a doubt the strongest on, on the short, sharp climbs. But that didn't do me any good whatsoever, because by the time I got to the top, I was so knackered that the guys behind caught me easily. And therein lies the dilemma. Do you go full gas and try to get a break? Now, we did shed one, one rider, my good friend Chris Hoppo. Uh, we managed to shed him on one of the short climbs. But um, I couldn't break up the rest of the, I think we were a group of five or six. And I couldn't break that group up any further because, as I say, although I was getting to the top of the climb first, they were closing the gaps on me fairly quickly afterwards. And I have to sit in when we're on the descents uh, or the flat in particular because I'm just not strong enough to compete with the bigger riders. And this is like shown when we get to the finish and uh, you see that week in, week out, I, uh, I struggle at the finish of these races because I have given so much effort on the climbs to try and get an advantage and try and stay with the groups that by the time we get to the end, I, I can't compete with the strong guys. I don't have a sprint. I'm too, uh, my watt kilo, uh, my FTP rather is something like 195 at the moment, which is ridiculous when compared to some of the bigger guys. So I can't sprint. I have to try and get an advantage on the, uh, on the hills. Now we're just over halfway. They've just passed the halfway point. So um, this is the, uh, what will it be, the fifth lap. Expect to see, um, I, I'd say the, the the next lap and the lap after will be the ones that probably sort out this group. And there's O'Grady, uh, as I say, off the front, riding on his own, still 60 odd metres between him and Gallagher. So no change there. Gallagher's riding behind him. This is a good ride from Steve. He's, he's equipping himself well here. I'd be pleased if I was able to stay mid-pack, you know, when moving up for my first race. And I think this is a really good effort. And he's putting out good watts as well, 3.8, which shows that he is, you know, he is a, a sub-4 rider and not a 3.2. But he's putting the hard work to get here. And... Uh, you can only admire riders that do that. I have a long way to go before I can ride in this race and be competitive, that's for sure. But it's my aim. Now, that's my aim for the end of the season, to to move up from 3.2 cap. Um, I think my best at the moment is about a 3.09, so 3.1. Um, so I, I have a lot of work to do before I... Uh, I reach my limit on the 3.2, but that's what I'm aiming for, and uh, I love these races. The, the courses are usually pretty good, 
certainly the Flemish for beginners courses have been absolutely superb. Um, James switches it up every week um, to vary so that he makes it fair for the uh, for the punchy riders, the climbers, the the rollers, the flat men. You know, he gives everybody a fair shot at the whip. So we're starting lap five now. Let's just have a look further down. There's Neil. And still in no man's land, Neil. And Raksha's on the steep climb. As I say, I don't expect any change between these two. The, uh, the Lantern Rouge, because I'm not in, officially in the race and in fact need to get on the bike very, very quickly. Um, so we'll head back to the front and I'll jump on back to the front and I'll jump on the bike and they've actually lapped Hollingsworth so stay with these guys while I uh, in fact no I won't I'm going to go back to myself just to make sure that I'm actually moving because if I'm not moving if it doesn't pick me up oh I am there we go you can see I just want to wait till my cadence shows there's my cadence showing and that should be enough now to keep me in the race for another 30 minutes. So I can stop cycling and I can get back to the race. And back at the front, we still have the five. Now, as I say, I think it's the next lap and the lap after. Laps, this is lap five. We're lap six and seven. Is this lap five or lap six? Anyway, the next lap, the next time up the climb, I think is where somebody will push for the break or possibly the lap after. But I think we'll see at least one of these riders dropped the next time up the hill. Because they've got to try and break this up. They can't. If they take Lopez to the finish, um, then he'll... He'll win the sprint, I reckon. Well, not the sprint. I think I just think he'll ride away from them in the final kilometer. I think. Mr. O'Grady. And he's actually opened up his gap uh, on Steve Gallagher. So, and in fact, Roberts has joined Gallagher now, which is no bad thing. If they work together, they can possibly start to close the gap on O'Grady. That would be my tactic. Get on his wheel, Roberts. So let's go to Roberts. Get on his wheel. Let's just swing the camera around so that we can see, what, see the action. Now, if Roberts can get on Gallagher's wheel, and they work together there's a possibility i mean gallagher's putting in a bit of an effort here to try and stay stay away and that's no bad thing roberts needs to put in a dig get on his wheel and then work hard with him and if the three of them can get together if o'grady gallagher and roberts can get together they're never going to close the gap to the leaders in time but they can at least work together and then they can fight it out as they come you know, as they come into the finish. Here we go. So Roberts is closing up on Gallagher and then they need to work together to catch O'Grady. And I see no reason why they can't do so. And then poor O'Neill is riding in no man's land. As is Raksha. And Hollingsworth is Lantern Rouge. Lopez is a very strong rider. I've watched him in a couple of races now. And he's also a pretty canny rider as well. He's got good race craft. He knows when to, uh, when to put in a dig, when to uh, stretch the group out and see who's weak and who's not. Look, he's putting in a dig now, look. He's a good racer, as is Barkley. 
I mean, I might, Barclay's my pick today, but they'll have to watch Lopez. This Lopez is always going to be one of the main favourites in such a reduced field. I mean, there's a lot of the big hitters missing today. But you can only win what's in front of you. And uh, as I say, Barkley's my pick today, but uh, I don't think Lopez is going to be far, far away. Now what's happening with that with that battle behind? Let's let's go back and have a look. Now Nylin's been dropped off the group, so he's uh, let's let's have a look and see how far behind he he actually. Whoops, wrong way. Yeah, he's a good way behind now. You can see he's not going to uh, he's not going to close that gap. He's he's completely lost it. Lost the group in front. And then behind Nylin, you've got O'Grady and the two behind. For some reason, the the short, sharp climb has sorted these out as well and the gaps between them have, have gone out. So maybe they're not going to come together. And what's happened to... Uh, Hollingsworth, has he, uh... oh, what's happening here, come on, what's happened to Hollingsworth, it looks like he's, uh, he's packed, no longer on the rider list, okay, now if you look at the graphic on screen, it's actually, the reason why I'm a bit confused over the laps is because it says 11 riders online, lap 1 of 8, and of course it's not lap 1 of 8, we're past the halfway mark um, for these guys, but I don't I don't know what's happening there. It's a bit confusing. So the leaderboard is still buggy. And they've just lapped me. Probably for the third or fourth time. <laughs> And Barclay's doing a hard pull, as you can see on the front here. Let's just switch the view around a little bit more. There we go. But they're going to they're gonna close this up. But he's testing the legs on the, uh, on the risers, which is, you know, a good tactics. Let's find out who the strong men in the race are. Have a look and see what's happening further back. It's Barkley, a bit of a gap opening up there. He needs to close that up, otherwise he is going to get dropped. Come on, Barkley, you're my pick. You can't let them go right away from you. Now, Nylin has completely lost the uh, the front group. He's not going to get back on. Steve's riding a really good race. I'm, I'm well impressed. As is Mr. Roberts. But the real battle is up the front. This is the one that matters. This is, and they've opened up a, my, my pick Barkley, they've opened up a gap on him now. And looking at the what kilos is, although they're going downhill, should be putting out big watts to try and close the gap. But it looks like he's settled for, the status quo because he's not doing that. 
So I don't see. Okay, well I got it wrong. Maybe my second pick, Lopez, will uh, will give me some credit in the end. Oh, he's putting in a he's putting in a big effort now. Come on, Barkley, get this gap closed. You can do it. Come on, you're strong on the hills. You've already proved that the last lap round. Come on, put in a big dig. Good man. The trouble is the others are putting look at look at they're all on red numbers they're all putting in you know big effort up this hill which is a that that can be a little bit demoralizing if you if you think you you're good on the hills and then you know the 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 leaders you're putting out good numbers but the leaders are, <laughs> are also putting out good numbers and you can't you know, you're not closing the gap. It can be a little bit demoralising. And yes, it's definitely between these three now. Mr. Lopez has allowed a small gap to... Oh, I'm saying that. Has Barkley... Is that Barkley coming back? Let's just go further down the field. There's Lopez. Working really, really hard to try and stay with this group. Let's swing the camera around so that we can see exactly what he's doing. There we go. There we go. He's working really hard to try and get back to them. And now he's stopped. Now that's a surprise. Has he had a technical? Is this, is this him uh, looking at the way he's turning his pedals? I'd say this is a technical. Oh, and that's just such a shame. He's got going again. Oh, that's, that must be heartbreaking. He's either had a dropout, a technical, well, dropout is a technical. That's heartbreaking. So my second pick had a drop out, lost the group. And to be fair, he's not going to get back now. What you have to realise is Raksha is a lap behind them, so although he's keeping good watts here, uh, he's keeping with Lopez here, Raksha is actually a lap behind. He's in 10th place. Okay, we'll just jump back to the front and have a look. So these two are away. They're a good uh, 260 metres in front now. And that's going to be incredibly difficult to uh, to close. However, Barclay and Lopez are together, so there's no reason why they can't put in an effort together. They can't expect Raksha to uh, to work. In fact, they're dropping him, as would be expected. But these two should really should really start putting in some big watts together, working together. Come on, take turns. Yeah. But I feel for Lopez uh, with the technical. And that's what it was, because when when you see uh, the figures on screen turn to zeros and then you see the avatar actually spinning the pedals, you know that he's trying um, he's trying to get his avatar moving again. So it's a technical glitch. It's either a dropout or something similar. 
And you saw when he actually came back online, his power was immediately quite high, it was in the 380s. So definitely a dropout or some kind of technical uh, problem. And he's putting out good numbers now and, and closing the gap slightly. Uh, this is going to be an interesting race. Whether he can get back on terms. He's definitely putting out some good numbers. Go back up the front and have a look and see what these two are doing. They're, and they're, they're working together, they're swapping leads. So, yeah, and they push. Look, look at the numbers. They're pushing heavy numbers as well. So these two are not hanging about. Then they're, they're trying to uh, keep the gap going by pushing, you know, mid fours, fives, even a six point nine there. So they're putting in good digs. They're not sort of like relaxing in the mid twos and threes. They're putting in good digs to try and stay away. Good tactics. Because you've more chance of the win if it's a two-man sprint than what there is if you uh, allow the other two to, uh, to come back to you. Although it looks like Barkley has fallen well behind Lopez now. Let's go and check that out. There's Lopez and there's Barkley. Let's see if we can see what it looks like on the road. Yeah, you can't even see the rider. In, oh, oh, he can, just in the distance there, look. So you can see that he's uh, he's got the rider in front in sight, but he's a long way behind him. And that's a lonely place to be. Okay, enough at the front. Let's go and have a look a bit further back. So there's O'Grady. Robert's not far behind, 30 metres behind. As I say, I, I'm really surprised that these two haven't joined up and worked together. But maybe they're just both riding at different uh, paces. There's Roberts. And there's now the Lantern Rouge Raksha. But up front, these two are working together 200 metres in front of Lopez. They're on the slight down now, now and they do seem to be cruising, although. <coughs> Excuse me. Wonder can can Lopez actually see anything in front of him? Can he has he got anything to look at? No, they're too tired for them to be in his eyesight, I think. Just wait till he goes around the next bend, but I suspect they're way too far in front now for them, him to be able to see them even. And certainly on a twisty circuit like this. Whoa, come on, get the graphics back. Yep, sorry about that. Yeah. Okay. And back, I can't see Lopez either, so too much distance between these riders. Not even in the distance. Nylin, who was well up with the group earlier, has just simply uh, 
topped off the pace. Although he's putting out good numbers now. So I'm not sure what happened with this fellow. Well, Grady and Roberts, as I say, haven't joined forces. There's still 30 metres between them. Steve Gallagher just riding his alone furrow. Neil Pugh. Nylin is actually coming past to actually to lap him as the rest of the front group did. I can do a couple of turn, pedal turns. Make sure. Yeah, there we go. So I'm cycling. Yeah. Now, are these two going to stay together for the final 8.3 kilometres? Or do you think one of them is going to get away? Let's start the next. To be fair to Lopez, he's, he's closed the gap from 200 and odd metres, 230 metres to 100 metres now just over so he might well come back to this to these two i mean barclay's not going to come back there's there's lopez barclay won't come back now he's too far behind but uh i mean lopez might well do let's see if we can swing the camera around and see if we can get a, a visual guide to how far behind them Yes. Whoops. Still learning how to how to switch this camera and, and things. So apologies for the late views. There we go. And the tree, the scenery tend, tends to get in the way as you're trying to switch the camera around. There we go. That's a better view. We're going to see him get the others in sight or not. There's 120 metres now, so it's fluctuating. Hmm. But these two are working really well together, and you can't see Lopez. Oh, you can. He's just coming around the corner now, so he's got them in sight, which is always a good, always a good sign. Although on such a twisty circuit, it will get them in sight and then they'll lose them. But and if you look at the watt kilos being put out, you can see that Lopez is is having to work significantly harder than the two in front. And just as I say that, uh, Greenhouse starts to put in a big effort. <laughs> yeah, commentator's curse. I make a statement and then the riders go and do something completely different. Uh, but these two are not really going full gas up this climb. Yes, they're, they're working a little bit harder, but they're not going full gas. They're working together here. They're just staying with each other. That's what I did on the final uh, climb yesterday. I realised there was no point in wasting myself, putting in full gas effort. Yeah, they're just they're just turning it over here. They're not really 
trying to uh, break away from each other. Six point two kilometers. Is that enough time for Lopez to close the gap? I don't think so. I don't think so. Possible, but I'm thinking not. So let's take a bit of a look back at Lopez. There he is, and the guys further down the field. Barclay's putting in a big effort up the hill. Red figures. Nylin has decided he's only doing 1.5 kilometers too. So I think he's just rolling around. I think he's, uh, he's giving up the ghost. O'Grady. Oh, they've joined forces now. O'Grady and Roberts are together. So they need to work together to get to the finish. And in fact, they're coming up to lap Rapture just in front of them. So there's a carrot for them to use. But they've really, they really should be thinking about working together now. There you go. Just stay on each other's wheel. Do take a couple of turns each. There's Mr. Gallagher in no man's land, poor lad. Neil's ridden his own race from after the first couple of laps. And Raksha, who's being caught by uh, Roberts and O'Grady, just behind him, look. He's our Lantern Rouge. And me at the back. So, it's all on these two, really. Well, I'm going to keep flicking through to see what's happening behind. These are the two that I'm going to concentrate on as we get nearer to the uh, finish. So now you can see in the distance, just just so he has. A, this is the same bit of road we he has actually closed the gap uh, visually. You can see him in the distance, and he can see them as just as they're coming up to the finish line. So this would be a good point to uh, to put in, you know, and in fact, is look, I, just as I say, this would be a good point to put in a good effort now that he can see them on this long straight. That's exactly what he's doing. He's putting in a big dig. Look, red numbers. So he's putting in a big dig to close the gap. And has done so. He's brought it down to 90 metres, 87. Come on, Lopez. The only thing you have to wonder is just say, you know, it's four kilometres to go. So just say he does close the gap. You know, he's 80 metres behind now. So he is closing. But just say he does close the, ma close the gap. Has he burnt too many matches to contest the final sprint? Because it is a sprint. If you look at the profile, you can see that the finish of the race, it's just pan flat. So if it finishes where I think it finishes at the end of the profile. And if, if that's the case, then it, it is. An, and it's, you know, I'm amazed. I know he's a strong rider. He's had a dropout. He's technical. And look, he's back with them. What a rider. What a race. Thank you so much, Lopez, for making this very exciting. Real, and look at the numbers, 9.5 from Janssen's putting it out, trying to, trying to stay away. Greenhouse putting out big numbers as well. Fantastic riding. Let's just switch the camera back so that we can see Lopez behind them. Whoops, not that, not that way, Derek. Round that way. There we go. Oh, he's still out of sight. Come on, lad. Come on. Close this gap up. Come on. Yeah, he's doing so. I'm so impressed by this ride. And as a commentator, as, a, as somebody that's following the races, you know, I'm neutral. All right, I chose Lopez uh, as my second choice. 
I'm neutral and but this is such a fantastic thing to see because it makes what was otherwise you know we thought that these two were just going to ride to the uh, finish the final three kilometers right to the finish and sprint it out between them which is exciting enough but the fact that a rider's managed to close a 250 260 meter gap after a dropout and the question now is has can he well he is doing look he's 0.7 so he's definitely like i say lopez is a canny rider he knows He's he's going to work as little as possible now on this run into the finish so that he's got something left for the sprint. He's a good rider. He might. I, I, I've seen him do it once before. I've seen him in the final kilometre. He hasn't waited for the sprint. He's opened up a gap and nobody's been able to go with him. So we'll see whether he uses that tactic today. I mean, this is pretty exciting. Green Aug looks strong, though. He just, he's just cruising. Just, yeah, he's just cruising along, looking so strong. Then you've got Janssen's pushing 9.5. Green Aug, 9.7. Janssen's 10.2. Just pushing out big numbers. And we knew this hill was going to make the difference. But they're all going to stay together on it. It's not going to split them. This is coming down to a sprint, folks. Sprint to the line. No two ways about it. Unless one of them, and they've just caught Neil and gone past Neil Pugh. Come on, Lopez. I know you're tired. Close this gap again. Don't let it open up. Come on. Come on. You've worked too hard now to lose them. But yeah, poor lad, He's, he must be absolutely shattered. Closing a gap like that. What a star. Well, they all are. I mean, I admire anybody taking part in these races, but these, these guys have just worked so hard together. This is impressive riding. So pick your winner, folks. Come on, stay on the wheels, Lopez. Stay on the wheels. Don't don't let a gap form. Sit in. Stay on the wheels. Coming up to the red kite. Any minute now. I think the kite comes just after this rise, doesn't it? Green looking so strong, though. Lopez. Now, remember what I said about it. He usually tries to go at the one kilometer. He's having a dig here. I don't think he'll do it. I think he's burnt too many matches fighting his way back. I don't think he can do his usual. I'm going to ride away from you in the last kilometer. He might do. He's, de he's definitely up for it. But I think he's burnt too many matches for that tactic to work with these two guys. They're too strong. I'm, I mean, if Greenow can put out 10.2 um, and he's not going full gas. Now, Lopez is having another dig. But I don't know. This is exciting. This is, this is going to go down to the wire. And Lopez putting in a dig, putting in a dig. But look at Greenhouse numbers, 10.5. Easily, easily came past. Yeah, Greenhouse is a stronger rider. Lopez would have been up for it had he not had to work so hard. But Greenhouse, over the line. There you go. Followed by Janssen's and Lopez in third. And let's uh, move down the field. And watch Mr. Barkley come home. What a fantastic race. What a fantastic race. Just absolutely superb. So impressed with that ride from Lopez. But Greenow, didn't he just look so strong at the end? 11 and a half watt kilo sprint and he didn't look like he was really going 
all out. So a great ride. We'll watch the whoops, get back on the road. We'll watch the guys come in. Just 650 meters to go for Mr. Barkley. Yeah, remember to pedal the new seat. Yeah, okay, Neil, I will. Thank you for the reminder. In fact, we will just, as uh, soon as Neil uh, Sparkly goes over the line, just check to make sure that I am actually pedaling. But I want to wait until Mr. Barkley comes over the line first. Don't want to miss that. Yeah, there we go. Let's just check on me. Um, sorry, home. Yeah. Yeah, there we go. So I've definitely been pedaling. Let's get back to the action. There's the front of the race. Page down, page down, page. There's Barclay, and next to come home is going to be Nylin, but he's a good way behind. Let's send a couple of messages while we're, while we're waiting. I'm just sending a few messages to the uh, to the riders if they're still connected and still, which I imagine they will be. Okay, and there's Lopez over the line, so we'll move back to uh, they are riding together. Now I wonder if they're going to have a two-up sprint. Let's see what happens here. This is this should be exciting. Let's just pan the camera around a little bit so that we can see. There we go. That's what we want. We want to be able to see them sprinting for the finish. So O'Grady's well, trying to leave Roberts behind, but. Yeah, who's going to get it? Oh, just on the line, O'Grady. And Roberts is still going. Okay, and the next one. Now then, this is interesting. Gallagher and Raksha. Okay, are riding together, coming into the finish. A kilometre to go. Let's see uh, if these two fight it out.
this has been, you know, I, I always like races where there's a lot of riders in them because it makes the dynamic of commentating, you know, when people are splitting into groups and this lot, really good. But this has been a good race to commentate on um, because there's been a few, you know, half decent tactics along the way. Um, it's ebbed and flowed nicely. And it's a good one for for trying to explain anybody watching, you know, newcomers or anybody not familiar with uh, with racing, uh, certainly esports racing. The tactics used can be quite noticeable um, on a course like this. You always know that the punchy little climb in the middle and the the two other risers are going to be places where you really have to you really have to watch what you're doing. You really have to concentrate because uh, you can very easily lose you know twenty, thirty, forty meters, and then it's goodbye and thank you if the group are working well together. If they decide to sit up and let you come back to them, then fine. But. Uh, it's been a good race. I've really, really enjoyed this. Uh, well done, Gallagher. So now Neil. That's a good race, Steve Gallagher, for your first comeback in, I, I assume it's your first race in the four uh, watt kilo category. So a good race to get under your belt. Something I'm looking forward to doing, as I say, but I have a way to go yet before I get there. So just two more riders on the road because obviously I'm not going to be riding the 35 kilometers to finish. Um, so we've got Neil here coming into the finish and then we'll have uh, Raksha as the Lantern Rouge. I think is he, he might even be a lap down, but I am going to wait. I'm going to wait for everybody to finish. I think that's only fair. So uh, although we know all the positions and everything, everything else, I am going to actually wait for Raksha to come over the line. I think that's Because I honestly expected a bigger field and to be here longer anyway. So, well done, Neil. Let's get let's get back to Raksha. Hope I'm pronouncing your name right, sir. Okay, so this lad has got 3.1 kilometers to go, so 10 minutes, give or take. Uh, 
I'll tell you what we'll do while while we uh, while we're following him around. Let's uh, let's give you a show of the different views that you can have in uh, spectate mode. So if we uh, if we go to the camera and I'll show you I'll show you what the difference is. This is going to be this is first person view. Okay, so you get the view as if you know the cyclist is looking down the road. Then you get third person, which obviously shows it from just behind the rider, the current rider chosen. Then you get the motor view. Now this is the one that uh, is used a lot in the racing, and certainly when I do the uh, moving around with the mouse, this is not a bad one for sort of like uh, showing the groups and this lot, and uh, when people are closing up. Then my favourite. This is my personal favourite. Um, other than the spec, the spectate mode uh, view that it gives you is better than this. But drone view, which is what this is, is really good when you've got huge groups on the road and the flying off up the front, and it shows you who's breaking, uh, how the groups are splitting, etc., etc. So drone view is probably the most useful uh, in the larger races for sorting out you know what groups are on the road then of course you've got race view i don't particularly like race view because of what it's doing here it's backwards and forwards and and it can be hard to follow a particular rider if he's in a group and it's following one rider but it's in race view that rider is sort of like being obscured by the riders around him and so this view is in my opinion the best useful but not the best and then you of course you've got auto switch now i used to love this view before spectate mode came along because so what auto view does is it switches between all the ones i've just shown you um and that's no bad thing it gives you different views of the terrain and different views of the rider profiles etc so yeah auto switch and then a very useful one if you've time while uh, breathing out of your uh, preferably your backside when racing you can actually look behind you and see who's closing on you or who you've left behind if you're going up a hill and I've, I've used this quite a few times to watch and see you know have I managed to drop anybody have they managed to drop me um but as I say, drone drone is generally the one most useful. But when you switch into spectate mode, which I will now do once again, you have to sh hit shift and F6. Now in spectate mode, you can keep drone mode, but you can also pan around with the mouse. So holding down the mouse and panning around, and you can basically get any view you want. You know, this is the rear view. I can get the side view. I can get the front view. I can go completely around in any direction I want to watch the riders and the groups. And it's really useful. Now you've seen me going up and down. You can go from the top. You can go from the bottom of the riding on, on the lake. Uh, that's what I keep making the mistake of. I keep going the wrong way. But yeah, this, this view and the way that you can move around, you can see if riders are up the road by switching around and going into this view. So you can see riders in front of you. It's a really nice feature. And I really like um, what RGT have done with this spectate mode. Um, I used to um, I used to commentate on events, still do, commentate on events over on Swift. Um, and you can choose a particular rider to follow but it's nowhere near as clever as this system for following riders uh, my one my one hope is that eventually uh when the interface changes so that you can you can use a mouse and keyboard combo to sort of like uh switch between riders that's what I'm looking forward to, to be able to click in the list of riders and actually click on them instead of at the moment. What, I'm, what I have to do is I have to go one at a time or from the front to the back. I can't sort of like jump from group to group, whereas uh, 
in the future, I imagine that's coming. I imagine that they're going to allow you with a mouse um, to be able to select particular riders, not necessarily in the order that you have to now, which is one at a time, up or down. I mean, if I go page down now, it goes to me. There's only two riders on the course. There's Raksha and, of course, there's me at the back there. But Raksha's now coming into the finish. I said about 10 minutes and I wasn't far wrong. So he's, uh, he's our Lantern Rouge, the last rider on the road. But well done everybody for taking part. Well done everybody for finishing. I mean, it's tough when you're riding on your own. When, you, when you're doing your own, your own thing, your own ride. And, you know, you're in no man's land. There's nobody to ride with you. Although this fellow has been passed a few times by the riders, so he's had a bit of company along the way. But well done. Well done, everybody. Well done to Nick for the win. Particularly well done to Lopez for having the technical and then closing what was a 270 metre gap. Fantastic effort. Um, really impressed with the race today. Good racing from everybody. And a good win by Nick. And a good second place. So, thanks everybody for watching. Uh, please hit the like and subscribe buttons for me. Help me grow the channel. Because I'm going to continue to cover uh, other events in RGT. Providing, you know, I'm getting some support. So all I need is a few likes. A few more subscriptions to get me up there. And we'll... Uh, We'll get some more done. That's it for now. See you later.